That's why evil people exist, to become good. There are very, very few people in history who were so evil that they were beyond, and so they have to be punished. But those are rare occasions. We saw a little bit of that in Israel last week. And you have to wonder, are these people redeemable? One of the most common questions that people have asked throughout history, maybe more complaint than question, why do the righteous suffer? Our sages thousands of years ago asked that question, why do the righteous suffer? Why do bad things happen to good people? Of course, the other question, the parallel question is, why do good things happen to bad people? That's painful too. That doesn't seem right. It violates our sense of justice. So both questions are very legitimate and both questions are more of a complaint than a request for illumination. I don't really want to know why it's okay for the righteous to suffer. And I don't really want to know why it's okay for the evil to succeed. I'm just complaining that it shouldn't be that way. And that it must end because it's not true. And truth must prevail. And the false must fail. So, instead of finding an answer, we do something about it. Make the world a better place. Educate people. Let them know more about God. This is where morality comes from. And that's how it will change. The righteous will not suffer. And the wicked won't be wicked. The unique feature of a human being is freedom of choice. God created us to be in a relationship with him, to be in a partnership with him, and the only way that can happen is if we have freedom of choice. If we are pre-programmed to do what he asks, then he is still alone. There's no relationship. A relationship means he is there for me and I am there for him. If I don't have that option, if I don't have that choice, then there is no me and there's no one there for him. He can't make me love him and be good because then it's his love and his goodness, not my love and not my goodness. God gives us freedom of choice. In that choice, we can be extremely good or we can be extremely bad. That's freedom of choice. The objective is that people should be extremely good. Even those who have a tendency and a temptation towards evil, who have practiced evil, who have violated all the commandments, still have freedom of choice. And God is patient. And he's rooting for those people to turn themselves around and replace the evil with good, which is an even greater achievement than if you were never evil at all. That's why evil people exist, to become good. There are very, very few people in history who were so evil that they were beyond hope. And the only solution for them was that the sin will die when they die. And so they have to be punished. But those are rare occasions. We saw a little bit of that in Israel last week. And you have to wonder, are these people redeemable? We don't know, because they were never taught. They have no idea what God wants, what God likes, what God hates, what God abhors. They have no idea. What would happen if they did know? Well, we, we can't predict. So before we condemn them as beyond hope, we have to give them the benefit of the doubt that it's really not their fault they were raised this way. So, of course, we have to eliminate that. But hopefully, those who have those same feelings will learn their lesson, turn themselves around, and replace or displace their negative traits with positive traits. There is so much to do 
to make the world better. But if you had to pick one to start with, tzedakah. Tzedakah, the Hebrew word for charity. Get one of these boxes for your home, for your office, for your car. And at every occasion, put in a few coins. Making charity and giving a daily habit. It's incredible. The blessings that it brings, the success that it brings, and the help that it offers to people who need. Kolel Chabad. That's my charity of choice. Kolel Chabad. C-O-L-E-L. Chabad. Look it up. Get yourself a box. And let's get the world better.